I think that I'm fairly open out about being a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, so it kills me to say the Baltimore Ravens have one of the best draft classes this year by far. I gave them A plus in the draft. I mean, they, they killed it. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Uh, their general manager is fantastic. It's a very stable organization, obviously. Uh, great leadership at the front office level, at the head coaching level. And Baltimore crushed this draft class. They got Kyle Hamilton, my top safety. You got Tyler Linderbaum, my top uh, interior offensive lineman, maybe my top overall offensive lineman in this draft class. And somehow ended up with two first round picks, only having one entering the night. And they got that one by trading away Hollywood Brown, a player they weren't going to pay because he's going to ask for way too much for what he brings to that team and what that team asks him to do. Uh, so I mean, that trade was tremendous and it helped Baltimore quite a bit. And they made it a lot of really good value selections. Get David Ojabo in the second round at 45th overall. Yeah, he's coming off a torn Achilles from just like maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago. He's not going to play much, F at all, as a rookie. That said, he was valued as a first-round pick before the torn Achilles, and he wasn't really projected to be much of a contributor year one anyways, because he is relatively new to the sport. Has just one year production at Michigan, and needs to bulk up a little bit to be more impactful as a run defender. So you get a job at 45, you're going to pair him with Odafe Owe going forward. You get Travis Jones, a defensive lineman, who's going to play a nose tackle, defensive tackle role, and really is not that much of a value drop-off from Jordan Davis, who Philadelphia traded up for it to get in the first round. And you get him in the third, you get Travis Jones in the third round. He's really not that much worse. So I think mean, that's a huge get for them. Daniel Falele, a guy who I really wouldn't have thought was going to succeed anywhere, but really maybe Baltimore, Chicago, maybe Seattle. Those are the only teams I thought Falele could really succeed with. And he's went to Baltimore. And so I think he has really a chance to develop. He's going to have to drop a lot of weight to be a, uh, someone who can actually play the offensive tackle position because, frankly, he just doesn't have the movement skills right now to be able to stay clean and keep both his, frankly, both his inside and outside shoulder clean throughout the pass, uh, throughout pass set. So, Philly is a developmental guy, but he's going to the right team to get it to work out. Jalen Armour Damas, just one year of, of really significant snaps at uh, Alabama, but he was a really impactful player for them this past year. He's better than Josh Job. A lot of people were more familiar with going to the draft process, but Armour Davis was the better corner last year. And then they get Charlie Collar, a tight end who I had at 128, and they actually took him 128 overall, so that was a really, I guess, a good call on my part. Uh, but Collar's a player who I like quite a bit because of what he offers you as a receiver. He's got a big body, but doesn't really offer much as a blocker. At the same time, he just is really good at finding space, and he's an easy target. He's quarterback's best friend, and he was really productive at, productive at Iowa State. Uh, compared to the other times in his draft class, he was one of the, by far one of the most consistent tight ends you'll see. So Kolar's, I think, was a really good pickup. They got Jordan Stout, who I believe is actually the best punter in, the, in his draft class. I know uh, Matt Arezzo was someone that everyone was targeting as like the punt god, quote-unquote, but that's just not reality. He's got a big leg, but he doesn't really know how to aim the ball. Jordan Stout is a coffin corner specialist. So I think he's the best punter in this draft class, and Baltimore picked him up. Then as they likely, this is a pick that kind of confused me a little bit. Uh, because you already have Charlie Collar, you already have two times you trust on your roster, but likely has some good separation skills based on what we saw on his tape. They didn't really show up at the combine or as pro day, but he's got good separation skills based on the tape, and I trust that. Uh, someone who can not really be a massive inline blocker for you, he can throw some blocks, but not really be a consistent blocker. Uh, but I'd, I'd be interested to see what they do with him. He's really a prototypical bigger wide receiver. I got him a decent spot. Uh, Marion Williams, cornerback from Houston at 141, I thought it was a significant reach. Uh, I'm not really a, into that move, but you know what? You've got so many fourth round picks, you might as well take a shot with someone. <laughs> you know, I can't really fault them for that. And Tyler Beatty from uh, Missouri, 196 overall. One of my actually favorite running backs in his draft class. I just think he's very small, he's very undersized for position. That being said, he broke a lot of tackles and had a ton of yards of the contact this past year. So maybe, you know, maybe he can just overcome the size barrier and be a productive running back in the NFL, and frankly, Baltimore needs the running back depth, considering what happened to them uh, this past year with all the injuries to everyone, to Justice Hill, to Gus Edwards, uh, oh, why am I blanking on, J.K. Dobbins, there we go, uh, you know, all those injuries, you, <laughs> you need to add that depth, and like I said, I do like him quite a bit as a player, and I love what I saw him in his tape in college, I don't know if he'll transition to the NFL, but hey, you know, six-round pick, might as well take a shot on someone you trust, and someone who looked really damn good in college, so overall, well, I think there's some question marks here. I really think I could have given them an A- minus for this grid, for this grade. I'm still going to give them an A+, plus just because I think they got a lot of my favorite players and a lot of the top positions of me on their team. And it fits the character of this roster. You know, it, everything fits. Everything makes sense in this draft class. 
maybe outside of the Marion and Williams pick. So for that, I'm willing to ignore that one, one little uh, slip there and give Baltimore an A+.